When I was up north, that would be a sunscreen day, nice and warm. Um, what would you like to talk about? Anything? Yeah, uh, Coach, right here. Just um, was curious about what the conversations were like with Jaden this offseason about what you guys really wanted to focus on with him this spring. If you could just go into some detail about that. Yeah, I think, you know, when, when – you know, Jaden made the decision to come back. I think there's, you know, a number of things that are on the table for discussion. And, you know, you start with, you know, the physical development, right? You know, certainly, you know, looking at, you know, how we can um, put together a plan for his, um, you know, strength and conditioning. Um, so we, we went into a Look, you know, part of this is we had to recruit him back too, right? So we had to give him a comprehensive plan as to, you know, what we were going to do in the weight room, um, you know, how we were going to um, continue to develop him, you know, technically as a quarterback, um, all of those pieces. And, and then, you know, utilizing the resources that we have uh, here, um, you know, we have – you know, VR, we have the ability to, you know, train year-round, um, having receivers here for him. It was really just having a comprehensive uh, year-round training program for him right here. Um, and, then, and then providing him the, the opportunity to do other things as well. As you know, he went out um, uh, on the West Coast and trained with, you know, um, other elite quarterbacks, uh, providing him um, the contacts to do that. So I think more than anything else, it was just really continuing the, the development um, of a, a quarterback that's in that stage. And when we were able to meet um, and he saw that we had a comprehensive plan, it, I think it helped him make his decision. Coach, what would your analytics tell you about the guys that were with you at this time last year, where they're at now, strength and conditioning wise, and do you, do you like where they're at? Oh yeah, it's it's quite different. Um, I can give you a, a couple of um, you know pieces of information. Last well, not this past Friday, but the Friday before we left. Um, you know, we had uh, nine players run 20 miles uh, an hour or more. Um, we only had one um, at that second practice uh, the year before. Um, so that tells us a little bit about our speed and strength, um, you know, being much more deeper within our entire team. Um, I think we've looked at all of our numbers and it's pretty clear that, you know, our football team is, is bigger, faster, stronger. Now you've got to be able to, to translate that as well. Um, you know, we, we clearly feel like we've addressed some depth needs, but you wouldn't know that today. You know, we've got eight healthy linemen out there. So we're actually in a different position than we were last year and that we have to be a lot more careful in terms of what we're doing. We've got some help on the way, which will help us during the season. But I think each year, what we're looking for is what you mentioned. We want to be physically stronger, faster, bigger, faster, stronger as a team, and we are. Brian, when Jay, Deshaun Womack uh, signed, y'all said, uh, you know, you envisioned him kind of as a jack linebacker. He seems to have put on quite a bit of uh, size at this point. When he is healthy, do y'all still see him there, maybe at defensive end? I think he's got some flexibility as, as a guy that could play the big end position, but we haven't ruled out um, how we play him. Um, is he a stand-up two-point player? In a, in a manner that he's 100% of uh, the time a jack linebacker? No, probably not. But it doesn't mean that we can't be in four down and he can stand up and drop in, in a limited fashion uh, to change the looks up because he is so athletic. Um, so your observations are, are right on. But we think that his athletic ability still lends itself to having some of 
um, the traits necessary to, you know, put him in, in a uh, hybrid position. Hey, yeah, Coach, when you look at Emory Jones, a 19-year-old true sophomore, seems like he's well beyond his years of maturity and leadership. But what are you seeing out of a guy like that who talks about winning national championships and want, wants to be a leader? Well, it starts with how he handles himself, um, you know, away from the field. I mean, he makes good choices, good decisions. He's never on a list. And, and when I say a list, he's never on an academic report. He's never on any of the, the lists relative to being late to anything. He's reliable. I was telling our guys the other day, you know, in my three decades of being head coach, if there's one question I'm asked over and over from GMs and head coaches, is he reliable? Is he going to be on time? Can I count on him? This is a guy you can count on, and we can count on him as a true freshman and now going into his – well, he's not a sophomore yet. He's still in his freshman year. He's so reliable, and, and that just goes to his, his parenting, his background, his high school, you know, where he came from. Um, he's exceptional. Hey, Coach. Uh, with a guy like Denver Harrison, just given some of his history, what made you uh, feel confident that he could fit into what you're building here? Yeah, I mean, obviously, we did a lot of research. You know, this was not a decision that we just said, you know, here's a great player. You know, he had to fit. We felt like, you know, we did our due diligence in terms of his background. And, um, you know, there's an affiliation with LSU here with the, with the family. Um, he had a lot of people speak on his behalf. Um, um, he had a number of interviews with, with Coach House and myself, and we felt with the the culture in which we have put together here um, that uh, he would um, make it here because uh, the culture is really strong, and it's proven to be that um, he's done well early on, um, and and he has no choice. Um, he has to make it. Um, so here's a guy that, that, that has been given a second chance, and um, we feel like because of the circumstances, uh, the culture is strong. Um, he knows that this is really his last chance at an SEC opportunity, um, that it was worth the risk, and so far so good. Hey, Brian, you know, obviously your Jack room is pretty much all new guys for the most part, and you decided to bring you know, Coach Jancic to be full-time focus on that. I guess what was your outlook this offseason on that room, and, and what are you seeing so far? Yeah, so uh, there, there's, there's young players in there, but we, we brought some transfers in there. So Ovia Gufu has played a lot at that position in a similar role at Texas, and we felt like him and, and certainly um, – Braden Swinson are two guys that had a little bit more of a veteran kind of presence with some young players. And we felt that that was the kind of mix that we were looking for. And, and that's proven to be pretty good right now. Ovi's been really good as, as a leader, as a mentor right away to some of the young players. And um, I think some of the young kids have, have shown themselves um, to be a little bit further along uh, than we thought, um, you know, and and that will be a position that continues to to evolve. But I think we wanted somebody coaching that position um, on a full time basis because of certainly, uh, you know, you look at what we're asking that uh, person to do. It's hard sometimes for the defensive line coach to break away all of the responsibilities of that position um, in terms of coverage and such when you're, when you're coaching the interior. So that's why we wanted Coach Jancic to be focused on that with the special teams. Coach, the, the new rules to allegedly speed up the game, are you in favor? And do you think that fewer plays is a disadvantage to the better team? I'm in favor of the rule. Um, I, I, I think 
I think it's good for, for college football. I think it is getting to the point where, um, you know, as long as it stopped the last two minutes before, the, you know, halftime at the end of the game, I still think you have the ability to come back and, and be part of, you know, comeback opportunities. Um, you know, I, I see it this way. Um, you know, the NFL's done a great job of taking every play and maximizing each one of those and each one of those opportunities, whether it be through shifting and motioning and, and, and trying to get the defense in, in positions where they're leveraged. And um, I, I really think that offensively, some colleges and offenses have gotten away from that, and they're just trying to run as many plays as they can. And I think it puts an emphasis back on execution. And you better be offense that executes um, and, and does a really good job um, from play to play. And you can't be loose and careless. You have to be focused and really disciplined offensively with these changes. Coach, over here, it, with the wide receiver room, have you seen Malik in the early goings of the spring kind of step up and show some leadership qualities and taking the reins of that top guy in that room? Maybe you can even throw Brian Thomas in that category as well. No, I, I think that's Malik uh, as as the the leader of that room. Um, and and look, I mean. I think there's so many things that you have to do on a day to day basis to, to get that like. You know, he's made some poor choices, but yet, you know, he makes great choices on a day-to-day -day basis. And that is, he trains hard. Um, he is a guy that, um, you know, when it comes to, um, you know, his academics, he takes care of those things. Um, he's a good teammate. Uh, as I said to earlier, he's reliable. He's on time. Um, he's a good teammate. Um, he's respectful, so he does have those those traits in the room, um, but he's got to keep doing it. You know, you know, I don't I don't know that we're passing out C's for the for the, for the shirts right now, but he's showing those kind of markers where people are starting to look towards him as 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 the leader in that room. Yeah, Brian, I know you only had a couple of practices before the break. Have you kind of already looked at maybe position changes for people or, or certain guys or discussions over last week? Maybe, maybe we should look at this guy, this position. Honestly, the only positions that we've made are to function um, in practice, and that is we moved a couple of guys on the offensive line just so we can, you know, get some good work in practice. I think the only – the only real, uh, and we did that at running back too. We moved um, Jack at the, the running back position just to, to get us through because we're so thin there as well. The only position that, that opens us up to potentially moving some people around is we have some pretty good depth in the, in the backfield. You know, is there, another, is there another safety possibility? Is there somebody that can move around in the backfield? That's yet to be determined. That will be an area that we'll continue to look at because there is some guys there that could possibly play a couple of different positions. I don't know who they are right now, and we'll continue to monitor that. But I don't see anywhere else that really would um, put us in a position where somebody would move to the other side of the ball. Coach, you're on your left. Um, could you just shed some light on how special teams will be coached up and different roles with different guys? Mm -hmm. So John Jancic will coordinate, which will be the voice of what we're doing. Uh, and, and we're not – I was really happy with our scheme. I, I thought, you know, as I did a, a deep dive on what we did special teams-wise, um, we feel, fielded the ball poorly. Um, last year, um, we we certainly you know we're in a position where a walk on was our kicker and and he had his moments but he had some big kicks as well. Um, 
I thought our punter was, was excellent. Our long snapper was excellent. So when you talk about the individuals, uh, we, we had to address um, kickoff return and, and punt return and, and who that person was, and I think we went out and did that. But from a schematic standpoint, I like what we do. So there, there, there won't be many changes. There'll be some coaching points and some tweaks here and there. Um, so John will be that voice. Um, Lester Erb will, will stay in his role as an analyst. And, and, and l l let me be clear about analysts. Analysts, you know, can't, like, go out and coach like one of the ten. But they, they are allowed now to um, be more active with the assistant coaches. And, and so Lester Erb did a great job last year of putting together our, our game plans, and I thought our game, game plans were really good. So he'll continue in that role. And then the assistant coaches, and in particular the coordinators, uh, will take a, an active role and a responsibility in each one of the units. So this is much more of a, um, a coordinator who will have the singular voice, but um, it'll, be, it'll be a team approach to the special teams this year. Hey, Coach, down here. Josh Sibley with uh, One Team Media. Uh, you saw Mason Smith running around um, doing non-contact drills. How important, what, what's the timetable for his recovery, and how important will it be to get him back in the depth chart? Well, it will be immense. I mean, you know, we didn't have, you know, a look, I mean, we had great edge presence last year, right? It was pretty obvious, like with, with Harold and, and BJ. Um, but you could fan one side and, and, and chip or move the back to the other because we didn't have a great inside pass presence, pass rush presence. Now you put Mason to the inside, if you do that this year, I don't know how many sacks he'll have. He, you can't single block him. We couldn't. Um, so when you start to fan to him, you know, and when I say fan, when you start to move the center to him or use a back inside, now you're going to leave our edge players one on one, and we'll we'll have a you know we'll have a really good balanced pass rush. So he he brings that presence which we didn't have last year. We had nine guys out today that factor into our two deep and significant playing time. Eight of the nine will be back when we begin our summer program in the first week in June. The ninth is Armani, Armani Goodwin, who won't be back until camp starts. So they're all in great position. They're all doing well. They're all moving actively. Um, so, you know, we're in the middle of March. You know, these guys are you know, on schedule to be full go, doing everything, you know, by the time we come back, um, you know, in the first week in June. Good. All right. Thank you.